Whoa, welcome back to the studio, Ryan, aka Bloodshot Airbrushing, and we are back for video three in the Dragster series. As a quick recap, you saw video one where we met the crew and we masked this out and allowed Mark at Ross Custom Paint to splash on some white so we could start masking out and spraying the grill and tail fin. Now that that's done, chrome. And I know you guys have been waiting for this. Um, I think we're going to break this up into a two-part video. I'm trying to keep these videos a little shorter for you guys. Um, for me too. <laughs> Makes it a little easier for everybody. <laughs> Especially me. Um, so we're going to start mapping it out. I'm going to explain to you what I do, why I do, and hopefully you can learn a thing or two. And, uh, that's about it. I'm gonna stop with the chit-chat, and we're just gonna get on into it. Feel free to ask any questions. If I've missed anything, I'm here for you guys. <laughs> Ding! Alright, let's get on to it. Nothing to it but to do it. Check. It. Oh! Over there. Alright, and as you may recall, where we wrapped up with the last video was painting this grill. And now we're going to tackle the chrome. And what is chrome really but just a reflection of its surroundings? So what we're going to tackle today, guys, is the horizon line. Which typically, depending on what kind of piece you're painting, if that is supposed to look concaved or convexed, your reflection lines are going to be a little different. Everything on here is very much convexed. We want it to look like it is rolling out towards you. And now, keep in mind, what we are painting here is completely flat surface. So what I'm doing is I am just mapping out a horizon line right about in the middle of that bar to make it look like that horizon is reflecting off the surface at its outermost crest. Then once we've tackled that, we need to add a horizon line to the very bottom because this is a rolling surface. These reflection lines, these horizon lines are actually gonna bounce off a couple different areas. And for the chrome on this, we are going kind of for a sunny day on a drag strip. So my horizon is gonna be relatively flat. Um, all I'm trying to do is represent some pavement and then we'll get some skies. If you want to make your horizon lines a little more uh, fanciful, feel free. You can throw buildings, trees, horizons, mountains, whatever you wanted. For this one, we're just using a blue, purple, brown mixture to keep it nice and gray to match pavement. So you saw me using a stencil and now you see me using some tape for these nice long lines. It's nice to get a nice hard edge and tape is going to get you there. Um, if you're working on a smaller surface, you know, your RC cars, anything that's a little bit smaller, you may not need to go to this extreme of masking, but I've got a big surface here and you may notice that I haven't masked off the grill. I'm just leaving that wide open. Any of my paint that can get oversprayed on top of that, well, is not really gonna concern me because if you may recall in the last video when we painted the grill, I was using pretty much the exact same color. Still my blue, purple, brown mixture. Um, usually I'm running about five drops brown, one drop blue, one drop purple. I change it up depending on what I'm trying to achieve. On this, I think I did go a little bit more blue for the chrome, just to keep it a little bit more cooler. Um, when you do look at chrome, yes, it is a reflection, but it's not a mirror. A mirror will give you a truer representation of the colors reflected. Chrome, well, it's already got a silver tinge to it before you reflect anything off of it. So keep that in mind when you're painting chrome. Um, you can do your horizon as a desert and you can do it with nice browns. You can use green for grass and so on. Um, same goes for the sky. It doesn't have to be a blue sky. You can use gray, keep it overcast. But keep in mind that whatever you're painting is still going to be on a gray side of the scale because chrome is not a mirror. It's a reflection, but it's not a mirror. It's reflecting off of a silver surface. 
And here you see me being thrifty and reusing that pinstripe tape rather than balling it up and chucking it away. And then we're going to toss on just a little bit of masking tape just to give me a little bit of a buffer zone to prevent some overspray going above that line. Focusing more on the edge of that tape or that stencil to give me a nice hard edge and then blending slowly down away from that. And again, as we move back onto the lower section of this bumper, and actually, if you look closely at the white paint, and you look at where the lights are reflecting off this paint, and where the shadows are being cast, well, that's virtually exactly, <laughs> not virtually, that's exactly where I'm putting my horizon lines. Because the same way the light bounces off this is the way the reflections are going to bounce off this. The shadows are starting at the highest point of the crest of that convexed surface. And then all I am doing is bringing that down with a nice fade Again, where we have areas that we're dealing with other surfaces next to one another, well, this is where you're going to start to see some additional horizons bouncing off of every surface. So basically, you have to look at every surface as its own separate horizon. And some of them, because of the way they roll, will be a harsh harsh edge, a nice hard edge shows that that is a surface that is rolling out towards you. Um, a softer horizon line will kind of show you that that might be more of a flatter surface, which is what you see me kind of doing right there, right? It's a flat surface, so my horizon line isn't going to be super, super hard. It's not going to be masked, it's going to be a fade, and it's going to give me enough to represent ground going down and sky coming up. And that's how I do, guys. That's how I do my horizon for my chrome. And now, as I was mentioning earlier, there I am taking a good look at my reference. It's good to have reference if you're painting chrome. Have some chrome reference. Um, but here I am, again, being as this whole thing is going to have a silver sheen to it, I'm going to go very lightly, and in the same areas that I will eventually go in with a blue to represent my sky, well, first, I'm going to go in with a gray and build it up, and this is, again, going to give it a three-dimensional roll, so it looks like it's kind of rolling back behind a little bit, and it's also going to, again, add with just the tone of the entire chrome. That's about right. And on to the side trim. Now, what you see there is not a black line that's not painted. Well, it is painted, but it's pinstripe tape. It got painted on the other side, then reused for this side. And uh, as you can tell by the little dangly bit at the end there, um, and what I'm doing is I'm just using a stencil to bring some horizon lines down on an angle and then whatever angle I choose to bring it down, I will reverse that almost like an arrowhead for the top section. And here you see me fixing a wobble in my pinstripe tape before I get too far. And what this does, besides correcting my mistake, is that leaves a white line. So I will go in, I will do the bottom a little darker, I'll go in and do some tones to the top, wash tone the whole thing, and then pull back that pinstripe tape, and now I have a beautiful white highlight on that beveled edge. Well, the fictional beveled edge on the make-believe trim to give it more of an angular 3D look. So as you can see, now that we're wrapping around a corner where you saw the first horizon line went to the front of this shape, now I got to do a bit of a horizon line to the side. And as you saw, we used a stencil to get that hard edge and then just some transparent layers, multiple passes to build it up dark and then blending it on down, keeping it nice and soft. This is why I keep my paint nice and transparent and I'd rather do multiple passes and build it up nice and slow than get it too dark and then you're fighting back and forth with white and gray and once you put white over top of this gray it changes it so it's it is a bit of a back and forth here we are going in with some more paint and uh testing it before we get too far 
<laughs> it's always good to make sure you got the flow before you go. <laughs> Sounds like an X-Lax commercial. But, uh, we're just gonna bang through the rest of this, guys. Um, I think in the next video, we will tackle the blue. I'm just doing a bit of a wash tone over the rest of that. And now, for your viewing pleasure, we're gonna do this emblem. Now, what I've done is I've cut my stencil to give me a horizon line, very similar as what you saw me do with the tape. Now I'm only spraying on that stencil, trying to allow that paint to blend down a little bit. We're in a pretty tight area here. So you can see I'm uh, trying to keep it to the top edge and allowing it to blend down. Now if you felt more inclined to tape this down or tack it down, and then have both hands so you get a bit of a better control over it. Um, I'm a trained professional, at least that's what I keep telling myself every morning to get out of bed. <laughs> and once we've got that horizon, now we're gonna use the original cutout and we're just gonna do a little bit of a tone again from the top coming down. As you see, we're building up a horizon and we're building some reflective tones from the background. I um, neglected to cut out a couple sections of the first stencil, so we're backtracking a little bit. And so she goes just to get these edges dark. And again, this is just part of the process. Doesn't always go easy. Sometimes you gotta take a step back. And once I have it stenciled on there, now I can go in and freehand and start blending and making sure that all my fades are nice. Once I'm happy with that, then we move on to our first color, which will be gold. And you might be looking at the emblem and be like, why? Well, two reasons. Um, the red I'm going to be using will be a candy. So it's always nice to have a nice metallic underneath it. The metallic will fight through the red and just give it a nice, deep, beautiful red tone. And I know this is just for those little tiny bars that are gold, but I also have to look at my stencils and look at my color process and realize that blue goes over gold a lot easier than gold goes over blue. A nice opaque white, what you saw me do first. Well, again, that has a great coverage power regardless what color you're using. So that will work fine to go over top of my gold and blotch it out where I need it white. But as you see with the stencils, this was the easiest way to get that gold bar in there without having to literally hand paint it. And now we go back in with the gray tones just to give a little bit of a shadow, just to look like this is a little bit embossed giving the impression of a countersink just to make it look like there are some levels. The chrome is above and these colors are below. And same with our white in this little area. I want these little gold bars again to look like they are a little bit above and that this white is a little bit embossed. So just the tiniest little bit of gray will uh, make sure you line it up. Make sure you got it lined up and this will help to make it look like there's some three dimensions kicking around and it's not just one flat piece. And repeat as necessary. Just go a little bit darker in that one area. And uh, this other area. <laughs> and that's how I build her up. Now I just go back in with a stencil and a little bit of free hand just to again Blend everything in, making sure that I like the way everything looks, making sure that there are some nice tones and blends. Just going over the entire thing with a fine tooth comb and, uh, well, I mean a stencil and an airbrush and just making sure that I'm happy with the way everything rolls, making sure that I'm getting those three dimensions to really be represented here. Um, this is a flat surface. Remember that. Everything I'm doing is just an illusion. Just trying to trick the eye to see something that is there that actually isn't. And there you have it for this little emblem. 
for now. Uh, we will get back in in the final video of this series and do some detail work. And you can kind of see with the paintbrush how we really bring this thing to life. And uh, the beauty rings for these headlights. Um, what you did not see was me masking out and spraying these black areas. Um, pretty simple and straightforward. Mask and save the white and then just spray that area black. Um, because of where it's situated, I didn't do any tones. I didn't do anything special. I didn't make it look like it's hollow. I just spray black. <laughs> just straight black. Just to get it in there, get it done. And now you see me doing my horizon lines on the bottom and on the top of these beauty rings. And the sides as well, using a bit of pinstripe tape and some masking tape. Now you see me going in with my thumb as a bit of an eraser, just cleaning up a little bit of a bleed through. Super easy. And uh, now we're just gonna do some more horizon lines. Hooray! <laughs> But uh, when we get to these smaller areas, well, everything becomes more compact. So we're just taking the same lesson as before, just cramming it into a smaller spot. And uh, as you can see, barely, I did uh, map out where my headlights are going to go. So you can kind of see a ghosting edge of where those go, just so I know how much to paint and how much to leave. And spoiler, yeah, it was at about this time in the project that we decided along with the client that there just wasn't enough hours left in order to paint, airbrush those headlights. So where you're gonna use the sticker, but we did get in, I did get the back all started. Um, it's more of a loose map out at this point. It's getting late, um, but here we are. This is it. And that's the end of day three. <laughs> They've left me in the shop all by myself. Party! <laughs> uh, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up here, toss my recycling in the recycling and get on home. Get some sleep and some dinner, and right back here to do it all over again. Alright guys, I don't know how we're going to cut these videos, so maybe we'll see you next time. Maybe you'll see me in two minutes. <laughs> oh, long hours. Job's getting crazy. Now, oh, this is what we do. This is how we do. Alright, later. And next time it will be where we blast in some blue, do some of the finer details and wrap up this baby. And feel free to slide on by the Spreadshirt page and grab yourself some Bloodshot merch, support the cause, battle-tested uniforms, and don't forget guys, we've got the beginner series, the airbrushing hacks, and plenty of tutorials tell the world the Bloodshot Army is here to spray. Cheers.